This is Savvy Resound, podcasting with purpose, hosted by Jamila Bay and Patricia Lambert. Produced by Red Shoe Savvy. Our guest today is Donna Jones, author of Decision Making for Dummies. So many women who are in business, whether they're owning their business or they're inside a corporate structure, have made adjustments to fit that corporate structure. And one of those adjustments is the negation of using intuition with decision making. I know that I've done that. I know that I am less capable of a decision maker as a result of having done that. And so, um, wonderful to have Donna Jones, author of Decision Making for Dummies, here to talk about, with Jamila and I, to talk about how we engage, how we re-engage that intuitive side of ourselves to enhance the power of our decision making. Now, Jamila, you, you're kind of in the same place? Absolutely. Um, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm torn a bit, and, and I, I want to admit that up front because uh, as a person who loves using my left brain, I, I love making lists and doing cost-benefit analysis sheets, um, but sometimes my heart longs for a thing, and if I can't explain it, I get very uncomfortable and I go, well, the sheet that I should do X, even though my heart says I should probably do Y. Usually I'm wrong when I go with the sheet and not my heart, but then I can't explain why that is. I, I don't fully understand it. I, I want to believe in the, in the data and the hard facts, and I have to admit things that to me seem you know, magical, sort of make me uncomfortable because, again, I can't explain them. I realize that that thing that I might call magical, I'm sure you have a different word for Donna, um, is part of what makes us human. It's part of what we do. It, uh, it probably is what I consider my reporter instinct. So there are times where I do rely on it, but it, it scares me, it confuses me, and it gets in the way of me making good decisions. I know I'm not alone. Please help. How do I? It's <laughs> a great way of putting it. Help. <laughs> you know, it's it's an interesting question because what what a lot of people don't realize, and a lot of people get confused about, is they think that intuition equals emotion. So in the in the workplace, there's this this separation between what goes on mentally and then feelings. We don't talk about feelings, we try to ignore them and that's why change initiatives completely fail because nobody's taking into account the timing, they're not taking into account are people ready, they're not taking into account much of the data that's in the space. So the, the rational mind's got all the facts lined up and that all looks delightful, but the actual body of the organization is not, is not paying attention to itself. And so intuition, what in, your, your intuition does and this is not <laughs> woo-woo, it's science, your intuition picks up data. It picks up all this data from the room, from the space, from the organization, from the context you're in, from your past experiences, from what the decisions, all the bank of decisions, the inventory you've made before, and it takes into account all of that data when it makes those decisions, and it does it at milliseconds, so it's heaps faster than your, your logical mind can process it. So, so that's what gets overlooked a lot is, is just that, that uh, there's this super, I call it, it's like a super computer everyone's got inside and it's taking in data from all, all space and, and, and running it through and coming up with answers for you in, in a heartbeat. So about 90, I think the estimate is about 90 to 95 percent of your decisions are intuitive decisions. They're just looked after. But the only ones you notice are the ones you actually pay attention to, which are the ones that are swimming around in your head. So, so that's, that's the big thing. I think if people in companies recognize that emotions and the social environment, the, the emotional environment is data that needs to be taken into account, better decisions will get made. When I ask this question of an entrepreneur, a guy in the United States, because often we have this thing where women are intuitive and men, well, we're not sure about it. Um, but I asked this guy this question of an entrepreneur in the States when I was wandering around there one time and, and I said, how do you know when you're 
you know, what, what, you know, what do you use? He says, I rely on my gut instinct. And he said, you know, I, I just, he says, I can listen to all the facts and figures in the world, but if it doesn't feel right, and he said, and I just get kind of a shiver up and down my, my body when it's right, and if it doesn't feel right, then I know there's something wrong, that I'm, there's data that I'm missing. And I thought, wow, that's pretty darn cool. So let's go back to your meeting. Uh, and and even to this guy, let's who's who might be in a meeting with other with other people, and there is an awareness that something doesn't feel right. Something is not adding up in my way of thinking of it. There's a risk there to say in a group of people who are all following you know the road to I think it was the road to Abilene, wasn't it the the old adage of, of everybody going in the same direction and nobody asking questions. There's a risk to saying, whoa, something doesn't feel right here or something's not adding up or, or those, those kinds of things. And a risk is a choice. How do we respond to that risk? And can we think of times when we've been in meetings where that choice has been in front of us and we have either taken or not taken that leap into uh, into stating something that is on that is in front of everybody in the room that is probably raising the temperature in the room and no one else is mentioning. It sounds like a lot of my experience to be honest. Um, uh, ev everyone is looking at a situation in this way. A breaking news example could be um, unfortunately, what we saw yesterday in Belgium, which we see, unfortunately, literally every day in the U.S., um, we know that something horrific has happened. We know that people are dead. We don't know who. We don't know why. And very often there is the groupthink rush that says, let us explain this. Let us talk about, well, you know, these people want these things, they are going to be saying these things, and that's not always the case. Sometimes it is, but not always. And to be able to, number one, say, let's take a pause, let's consider that what our senses might be telling us, what our experience in the past might be telling us, may not be accurate right now. Um, this is where this is the part of intuition that I struggle with. Um, yes, it's all looking like ABC. However, we don't know that we are going on what we've experienced in the past. How do we slow that 95% intuitiveness down to the point where we might actually need to look at outside evidence outside decision makers if you know if if you've got a product that's that's not selling well and your consultants are telling you it's not selling well because of this um, you need to make these changes um, because it's worked for similar companies to yours but something inside is saying hold on wait a minute do we need more evidence do we need more research um, when your when your gut isn't sure or when your gut is too sure, that's where I really struggle and, and I I know that that's where companies tend to struggle too. What you both described in your in your thing is, is a dissonance. There's a there's a there's a sense that what the head has gotten in tune with and what's going on at the heart level aren't aren't unified in any way. And that that's immediate instinct to kind of stop and step back. That's conscious, but the way your intuition works, it's precognizant. It happens before your mind knows. So the minute it hits your mind, it's a, it's now data. It's now information that you can use. But you've already intuitively made the decision. I love your question, Patricia, because it's that question about, you know, what's the risk of saying, "Yeah, this doesn't work." You know, there's something here. Well, the risk is failure massive failure and in, in case of public transportation projects where the engineers decided nothing could go wrong <laughs> and, and a bridge falls down or something you know oops uh, there's lives involved in, in a lot of in other words there's consequences and so the risk of not asking those questions the risk of not interrupting that group think that you pointed out Jamila, is is 
has serious consequences. And so this is the place where self-leadership, um, where, where disruption of thought, uh, disruption of the conversation has tremendous value for saying, you know, what are we not asking ourselves that we need to be asking ourselves? Because if we're not asking those questions, we're not going to be making a decision we can all walk away and feel really good about. What we're, what we're looking at in some ways is something that I know that Donna has talked about in other forums and certainly in Decision Making for Dummies, and that is that we know what we know. Uh, we sometimes know what we don't know, but we rarely don't know what we don't know. And, right. and that uh, the, the not knowing what we don't know, to me, is one of those emotional triggers that comes up or those heat raising triggers that comes up when I'm in a circumstance where decisions or solutions are being sought and it's not making any sense. So how do we start to embrace I don't know what I don't know? The unknown part, the uncertain part, the unpredictable part is the life is the world we live in today. And there's been no shortage of entrepreneurs that have said, you know, I know exactly what I'm doing, I got this nailed down, and wham, bankruptcy a week later or something. So it, it, it's, it's that pause, you know, that comfort with being not actually knowing. There, there's a trust in the space that says, I don't know how this is going to turn out. And this goes beyond intuition. This just goes into straight up forward leadership. This just goes into the space where you allow for possibilities to emerge in the confidence and trust that you can handle whatever shows up. I'm sitting here wondering whether part of our reticence to engage the autopilot is our environment telling us that that learning, that knowledge, that experience, that all of that kind of stuff is, you know, really what's important in life. And all of a sudden we've got this autopilot over on the side going, oh, wait a minute, you're off base, you're off base. Ah! The best way you can navigate that is become increasingly aware of what you're focusing on. You know, what are those beliefs that you're using as your underlying assumptions about how the world works? What's that world view, you know, made of? And when you get challenged, what do you do? Do you try and control the conflict? Or do you simply allow it to show up so you can see and explore and, and learn from it? Donna, I am so glad that I got to chat with you, with Patricia, of course, today, because, you know, so often, particularly as women, we are taught that we don't know enough, we're not authoritative enough, um, you know, you're, you're just this little female person, you look pretty and, you know, you don't stress your brain too much. But the truth of the matter is that we all have a deeper wisdom. We're all, you know, I, I, I liken it to riding a bike, perhaps. We're making minuscule decisions by the microsecond, uh, some of it based on perception, some of it pay, based on experience. And it, it, keep, it keeps us on the right track. It keeps us from falling over when we decide that we have a a thought or, or a conflict that we're not sure how to work out, if we can take the time and think about it, uh, if we can get more information, great. But most decisions are going to do fine if we intuit them. We know more than we think we do. I, maybe mom was right after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The key to it all is being able to be aware of what you're feeling uh, be able to redirect those feelings if there's fear involved, if there's constriction, to, to, to redirect it to more of a centered place so that you can function not just intuitively but cognitively as well because otherwise it is, you know, I mean, without your managing those emotions, both systems, both decision making systems get compromised. Thank you for watching this episode of Savvy Resound. We would love to hear from you, your ideas, your questions, your thoughts. You can reach us at info at redshoesavvy.com. Until next time, belong to the conversation and you will belong in business.